All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Southwest Florida TechNet. We are broadcasting uh, worldwide tonight on YouTube, and we are on Zoom for anybody who wants to participate, uh, any ham or potential ham uh, that might want to participate. You're certainly welcome to do that. Um, we are. Uh, I'm live tonight in North Fort Myers, and we're going to have Joseph joining us shortly uh, from Northern Alabama. And we've also got Rick and Dave and a lot of our regulars in here tonight and uh, Chris. And I appreciate you guys all coming in tonight. Um, we're going to uh, it, it's a messed up night. I'm going to start by uh, uh, I, I hate to always start the night with excuses of why my performance wasn't the best. Uh, but we're going to do that tonight. I um, my mom has been in the hospital for three days. She's uh, we just got her home a little while ago. Um, it was a a little bit of a heart problem but not a heart attack so we're, we're just having to work through some things right now and uh uh we're going to be changing some meds and things and and uh she's 77 so it's touch and go it's scary she's still uh she's still a very active 77 year old she uh just a few months ago drove herself to georgia to the north of georgia mountains and spent a week by herself and came back like six months ago so um we're hoping you know that things will get back to normal with her and all that so but i didn't even have a chance this week to put the newsletter together um i have not had a chance to do much of anything uh tonight i do have a little bit of a special presentation i'm as you guys know i'm a geek and i sometimes stray outside the box of ham radio um you guys know i've been a ghost hunter i've been a firefighter i've been a cop i've been an emergency manager uh, i've been a little bit of everything in my life uh, hell, I even drove a taxi for a time. Uh, so, uh, and you don't learn you, you don't learn anything about human nature until you uh, drive a taxi cab. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, and if you, those of you who have know what I'm talking about, you, yeah. meet the, you, you meet the best of people and the worst of people. Anyway, um, um, but um, I've I've been around. I've done all this all this crazy stuff, and I, sometimes I like to go outside the box a little bit. So tonight. Uh, for the first part of the show, I'm going to talk to you guys about generating hydrogen power. Now, before we get started, I want you guys to know right up front, I am not one of these green people. I, um, I believe that green energy is only good when it can be done without damaging the economy. Um, but I am for green energy. Um, I'm for any self-sustaining energy that can pay for itself, just like anything else in the free market. And I think we're just about there with some of this technology and other stuff we're not. Like, let's, for example, uh, uh, electric cars. I'm not going to sit here and diss on electric cars for 20 minutes, but I could. Um, there's a lot of good and a lot of bad about electric cars. 80% uh, of the power here in Florida is still generated by fossil fuels. So it's not getting you off fossil fuels. No. Uh, it's just changing the way you pay your fuel bill. Um, and FPNL just went up 27% in six months. So if you guys don't think we're going to feel it, you're going to feel it, whether it's at the gas pump or at the electric pump, it doesn't matter. Um, their Toyota has just for, came out with the first line of hydrogen vehicles. They're not being accepted very well in this country because the government doesn't like hydrogen vehicles. Uh, and I, you can probably guess why the government doesn't like hydrogen vehicles, because they can't tax hydrogen vehicles because they don't take a fuel that they can tax. It's something you can make in your garage. And they also feel that we're all not smart enough to do that without blowing each other up. So what ends up happening is, is we end up not getting uh, not getting this being a big thing here. I'm not going to get into the government side of this. I really don't give a shit about the government side of it tonight. Uh, what I would like to talk about tonight, I'm going to I'm going to do this. You guys can see the big, huge pile of Amazon boxes back there from uh, all of my recent purchases. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, tonight we're going to talk about this amazing thing called hydrogen power. And basically with just the additive of a little bit of uh, powder uh, that is readily available and inexpensive, you can activate water to the point that all you have to do is just simply pass a current through the water and it cool. starts to create oxygen and hydrogen gas. And if you, and depending on which generator you make, uh, it will dispense these gases separately or it'll dispense them together as what they call like a brown gas. Um, some things will run on brown gas. For instance, I'm going to show you a video tonight uh, in our bullshit or not segment. Uh, I'm going to show you a video tonight. <laughs> Rick likes what I call it that. It's the bullshit or not segment. Uh, is this bullshit or not? 
uh, because I, I think I might call BS on this one, but uh, these guys hooked a generator up to a hydrogen generator, uh, a, a, hydro, a little hydrogen maker, uh, and they're running a regular little 3000 watt generator off of it. And of course, when I saw this, I started jumping around the shack a little bit. And I'm thinking, oh, I can see what I'm doing with that new generator I got. Uh, but um, I saw a few things in the video that I think might be crap. How can you feed like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. There's no way you can do it without changing the carburetor somehow. And they're saying they just fed it in where the gas feeds in. Well, that don't make no sense. It's not liquid. So I, I'm not really sure about that, but it is cool. It's an, another video to show you kind of the process of this. But um, I, I just, I found all this to be really cool stuff. And um, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so unprepared tonight. I don't even have these videos pulled up yet. Um, but uh, the, the, there's a couple of different ones we're going to look at tonight. Uh, like I said, one, one of these hydrogen generators makes all the hydrogen and oxygen together. The other one makes it separately. Uh, and it all depends on how you want to do it. All right, here's, this is, this is the one I wanted to show you guys. I, I'm going to see if the sound works. Uh, and uh, we'll, we're going to go through this. And as we go through this, I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to talk about it as we go. Um, because I'm not telling you guys you should go out tomorrow and start doing this. Uh, that's not my purpose. I am probably going to mess with this right up to the point that it either blows up or I get tired of it. Um, I, I think this is really cool. Um, yeah, being a former fireman, I usually do things right up to the point that they blow up. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, this is a really cool thing and I, I, I wanna mess with this. I wanna see if I can make something work off of this. Um, and so I, I'm gonna try this. We're, we're gonna literally take a dive tonight into making your own homebrew hydrogen system. And I think this is going to be really cool. Uh, this guy right here, this is the video that kind of got me going on it. I originally started watching this video and uh, I want to see tonight. We're also testing the new system. I want to see if it plays the video. Okay. But anyway, here, I'm going to let him explain and I'm going to be stopping along the way so we can discuss it as we go. OK, so this is going to be a like a participative video uh, that I'm going to be stopping and starting. Uh, but anyway, here we go. Hi, everyone. In can you guys hear him? Yeah. Uh, okay, yes, good. sir. In this video, you can see in front of me, I have several devices, which are the result of this last week's worth of experimentation. These devices are meant for electrolysis, which is the electrochemical process of splitting water into its component atomic parts, hydrogen and oxygen. Now, there are several different ways that you can do this, and I have attempted to develop these models for electrolysis independently of other designs because I wanted to be original in my thinking and hopefully have something new to contribute. Now, the two primary ways that electrolysis is done is having a split output design or a singular output design. Meaning, when you split water and you get hydrogen and oxygen at the output, you can either have that hydrogen and oxygen combined as it comes out of the device, meaning there's only one outlet to, or you can have separate outlets. Now, when you have a combined outlet where the hydrogen and oxygen is pre-mixed as it exits the device, I don't find that especially useful because the gas that comes out is called HHO or Brown's gas. It is a stoichiometric mixture of hydrogen and oxygen, which is just waiting for a spark to rapidly explode and turn back into water. It is extremely dangerous to store in any quantity, and so you cannot produce it in advance of whatever you're using it for. Mm. Fire, fire. The more yeah, useful yeah, yeah, method fire. for electrolysis that I have found is to have a split output device, meaning that hydrogen comes out of one outlet and oxygen comes out of another. It's much safer to store the gases you produce because they are not immediately explosive. In this video, we probably won't get too deep into the applications for pure hydrogen and oxygen gas, but for someone like myself who does a lot of home chemistry and physics experiments, 
The most practical purposes for these gases are going to be of that nature, doing home experiments. And especially if you keep following my channel, you may see me make an oxyhydrogen torch, and you also may see pure hydrogen used in my thermoacoustic experiments. So this is the first electrolysis design I came up with for this video. And right off the bat, there are a few fatal flaws in this setup, but there are a few features that I really like that I continue to use in my following design. So we'll go over those first. First of all- By the way, everything he uses here can be purchased at Publix. These are egg beater whisks. That's that wire mesh stuff you buy to clean your pots, not SOS pads, but the shiny ones. And uh, but that's just a whisk. This whisk comes with a handle that he just cuts off and he uses, and then he silicones it in there. And that what was the handle becomes the pipe that he hooks his uh, tube onto. And, uh, and there you go. And then you just clip on the outside of that and you can run your current through it. It's pretty amazing. Um, this one here didn't work all that good because the water was not connected directly from one to the other. And so he had to use a lot of voltage to get this one to do anything. So it wasn't a very good idea. So I'm going to kind of go past that. I want you to see the next one here. He's trying to find a way to get the oxygen and the hydrogen to come out separately. So he's using the bottle inside the bottle design. Bottom of each bottle instead of traveling all the way up and around almost 12 inches to make electrical contact in my first design. Because of that, this version works significantly better at producing- If y'all blow yourself up, don't call my insurance company. Gas. The only problem is that this <coughs> setup right, has an open top, which means it's very easy to tip over and spill. If I were to fill this setup with water and then a solution of lye or potassium hydroxide, we would have a very dangerous situation on our hands where this container could easily tip over and spill a hot caustic solution all over me. The final version of my split output electrolysis device using- Excuse my skipping ahead. I've got ADD like you know what. The stainless steel whisk electrodes. And in this case, it is packed into a single watertight container so I can feel safe using potassium hydroxide as the electrolyte. Now, in order to construct this, it was a simple process of drilling two holes straight through the lid of this container so that the stainless steel tube that surrounds the handle of the lid- That's literally like a Tupperware container or something. Could pass through the lid and then through the cap of several bottle caps on the underside. Now, the reason for these bottles, as with the previous version, is to direct the gas bubbles upwards that are formed around each electrode. So hydrogen only flows upward and out of this tube and oxygen out of this one. If Remember, I whatever electrodes hooked up to positive current creates hydrogen. The electrode that's connected to negative current creates oxygen. Isn't this cool as hell? I just can't get enough of this. Have it connected in that configuration. So let me put on my safety glasses We'll take this lid back off and load this container up with electrolyte and then connect the power supply and see what happens. Now, he did mention there's several kinds of electrolyte. There's more stable ones that will not poison you if you can breathe it. But if you use this one he's talking about here, it works very, very well and will give you instant results at a very low voltage. Now, in this case, I am so confident that this is going to work extremely well, that before I turn on this power supply, I'm going to turn the voltage way down because we're not gonna need nearly as many volts to reach a high current using potassium hydroxide. So I've got this connected up so that we're producing hydrogen out of this side, oxygen out of this side. Oh, I might've got my sides back. Power supply, and then we will slowly- Yeah, I think I got my sides backwards, just as a disclaimer. Turn up the voltage. All right, we can see already how quickly the amperage is rising. We are already at four amps at almost seven. Look at the bottles. So this is much more effective than the previous models. As I get up to about 12 volts, which would be what you could generate if you were running this thing on something like a battery charger for a car, this is the current you could expect to draw, more than nine amps. 
we can see already how much gas is being generated. Some of the dangerous things we need to look out for in a device like this is if there is a lot of air above the surface of the electrolyte in this container, that is a potential volume of gas that could fill with hydrogen and oxygen and become explosive. So if you see bubbles escaping out from underneath the containers in this setup, you want to be careful and maybe readjust the containers so fewer bubbles escape, maybe raise up the electrodes so they are higher above that lower rim of the containers. You also should open this container up after you're done running it, let it air out so that any buildup of residual gas is gone by the next time you use it. One final thing you should be aware of when using an electrolysis device such as this is just pay attention to the temperature. After about a half hour of passing nearly 10 amps through a small volume of fluid like this, it's going to get quite warm. Warm enough perhaps to damage the plastic container or the bottles inside. In a previous run of this particular model, I was using different bottles on the inside of the container, and this is one of them. You can see that it is severely deformed from the perfect circle it was originally, and at the top, it's actually cracked all the way through the bottle. There must have been some pre-existing stress in the plastic of this bottle, which the hot potassium hydroxide solution was able to release, forming these cracks. So if this seems like it's getting too warm, just ease off on the voltage on the power supply, or if you're using a battery charger, disconnect it for a while. Let it rest, cool off before you continue. Well, as I mentioned, this is the last variation of a split output electrolysis device that I have to show you in this video. But I do still have two more models to demonstrate that have a combined output. Now you might ask why I would bother combining the outputs since at the start of the video, I mentioned that having a split output gives you a much more practical product. Well, they're I'm just going to buzz through these. He, he makes one out of a, like a metal container here, which is pretty interesting. But again, this releases Brown's gas, which is not, you know, it's dangerous. Um, and then he makes another one here out of a bottle. Um, what this, the reason you have it go into a bottle and then come back out of the bottle like this is because um, it prevents spark from getting back into here. You see, that's the only reason this second bottle exists. So anyway, that's that. And um, I I wanted to show you that one. And then the other one I want to show you is, uh, uh, let me find it here. And, and this one is the one where I'm just not sure how it would work. I, I want to believe that these guys did a good job. The video is really well done. Uh, they look like they knew what they were doing. But I almost have a hard time. We have modified this engine. I I have a problem with this one because I I we get to the carburetor and I have a problem and I'll let you guys watch. It's only twelve minutes. Let's just watch it and I want you guys because I it's a well done video. I'm gonna fast forward this. He makes a bunch of plates. Okay, he drills holes in a bunch of plates, and then he he gets some um, these filter uh, filter casings work good. Now see on his he's using Brown's gas because his does not collect the gas separately. Uh, his is collecting the gas at the same time. So it's Brown's gas. So what he's feeding into the alternator or into the, I'm sorry, into the generator is oxygen and hydrogen. Now what he's making now is each of these plates is going to connect to the other, to the opposite rod. You guys see what I mean? He's got an isolator on either end. And the way it works is each plate is connected to the opposite side. So it's left, right, left, right, left, right, all the way up. So you have a lot of a lot of plates right next to a lot of other plates that are the opposite voltage. See, so he's got little spacers to go in there so that it won't uh, it won't touch the metal, I guess. And I'm going to fast forward through some of this where he builds this. Basically, he builds this uh, device here. And uh, and he puts it down in there. You guys still with me out there? Yeah. Okay. It's either really interesting or really boring. I never know which. <laughs> Different. Something we didn't think about. 
Well, you know, yeah, that's to me. When I saw these, it was almost like a little mini epiphany. <laughs> I was like, whoa, yeah, this is really cool. cool. This is the future. This is the future, not electric cars. I'm telling you. It's just if you saw the first gasoline motors and what they had to do to start them and keep them going and, and service them, and it was terrible. It was crazy. But look where we are today. We got cars that run four or five hundred thousand miles. Yeah. You know, with little maintenance, very little maintenance compared to 40, 50 years ago. Now, again, this is the blast chamber or I, I, that's not what you're supposed to call it. I guess you would call it a flash chamber would probably be a better word. And what he's basically doing here is when the Browns gas comes out of the hydrogen container, uh, it goes into the spark suppressing chamber, I guess. And uh, in that way, I love this here. He uses like 15 different adapters. There had to be a better way to get where he was going. Hmm. Now, my dad was a plumber and my dad would tell me there's got to be a better way to go where he was going. <laughs> <laughs> but he this went there like, he got like there didn't of, he it looks like some of my coax cable connections around here i know yeah i know it's and and i hate that because you get lost yeah. he's checking to make sure he's got the proper continuity on each side every other one looks like a capacitor <laughs> yeah and he, he's gonna take the fuel tank off and he's gonna cut this plate and put like a plate on the side to hold the system I'm not I'm again going to go a little fast through the building of the of the brackets and stuff. I want to get back to the electrical part. He's going to wire him a little switch in here uh, so that he can turn on the uh, power from the little battery that he's got to power the system. All right, so there he disconnects the fuel line and takes off the gasoline tank, not a propane tank, a gasoline tank. OK. Um. They do some pretty work. I have to admit, it's good work. But look what he does right there. This is the part I have. Okay, he just shoves the hose into the gas line. Now, somebody in here has got to know these little carburetors better than I do. Would that even work? Yeah, because... Uh, Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it I don't know. Because... I worked on a lot of those little carburetors. Yeah, all well, a carburetor does is to turn the liquid gas into gas. Into gas. So if it's already uh, gas, it would just flow through it. Just like propane. Right. I've got, I've got a generator that works off both. And the propane, of course, is liquid, but that evaporate, you know, that converts into a gas before it gets to the carburetor. So what he's doing though is he's cutting off the air. If you notice that piece of cardboard. You know why? Because the Browns gas already has half the oxygen he needs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So he's cutting out the air coming or well, cutting down. I don't know if he's cutting it out. He might be cutting it mm -mm. completely out. He says about 50% is right. Okay, but you so if you're running rich or lean, you would adjust use you would adjust the size of this piece of cardboard. That yeah, makes I mean, sense. Is that four yeah. stroke or two stroke? I'm guessing it's four stroke. I think it's a four stroke. Yeah. So in which case, he's probably got electronic ignition. So it probably more I think about it, it power. couldn't be a two stroke. Why not? Well, because there would be no way to run the oil through it. Well, you can have a separate oil tank like the bicycle, like motorcycles do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I don't know how that because you're feeding gas into the motor, not a, 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 an an actual gas, not not uh, liquid. <laughs> I don't know. It, I think it has to be a four stroke. I, I would almost think it would need to be, but this one is anyway, regardless. Yeah. Um, it's getting harder and harder to find two stroke stuff anyway out there. Except the little, little teeny things like uh, weed eaters and stuff. They're all still two stroke. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of two stroke around. But anyway, I, that, this is, this was neat to me because if it's running rich, uh, you would cap off a little more of this coming in if it's running a little, you know, whatever. It, you would adjust it with this, which I thought was kind of cool. But yeah, it's it's well, about if it's, if it's running rich, you actually take it away, so you're adding more oxygen. If it's yeah, that would clean, make sense. You yes, reduce, you reduce the oxygen. Yes, exactly. But and then again, that's just a flash chamber. Is all that is to keep the get the the flash from the gas flow back. <laughs> 
you don't want the flash from the gas to go back into this chamber over here and blow up. You get the dog excited. But I mean, this this is it. He builds this thing and he starts a damn thing up and runs it. And I can't see where he's got like, I don't know. I can't see where he's faking it. I can't believe he would go through all this to fake it. There's his battery. And then he just flips the switch and it applies the voltage. And then once he gets the voltage, he starts getting the gas. It's that simple. And then you just charge the battery off the generator. Yeah, what we're losing out here is that how many prototypes did he make first? Right. Well, but yeah, but that also follows that if we make it very similar to his, it should be successful. Okay, see, he flips the switch instantly. You, you start getting Brown's gas. And it comes down here and it bubbles back up. Again, this is a flash suppressor type thing here. And, and there you go. He started up and runs. <laughs> and when I saw this video, I'm like, well, kiss my ass. Yeah, well, I'm thinking how, I mean, how much electricity is he actually using? Well, it's a 12 volt battery. It's small. And again, all you'd have to do is charge it off the... Remember, it's not a perpetual motion machine. It's actually generating fuel from the water. Okay, he just... He makes a real dingling of himself with this tool. But anyway, um, he uh, he's showing you here that it works. And I don't see any way this generator would be running. I don't see a fuel tank on it anywhere. You take the fuel tank off. He hooked it all up. I watched him do it. But it could be faked. I don't know, you know, but it I sure know, looks it, know, it looks real to me. It does. But what there's several concerns I've got is one, how long will it actually run? I mean, like you say, we haven't got perpetual motion, so he's got to be getting the electricity from somewhere. No, 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 no. The 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 Brown's gas runs the generator. The generator uh, creates the electricity. The electricity charges the battery because it's not a perpetual motion machine. You can continuously not only keep your battery charged, but also generate electricity for your house. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it generates its own electricity to recharge its own system, just like your car does with the alternator. Well, yeah, but it uses a, a different fuel to do that. This, right. this is, there's, there's a hole in that. I mean, I've got a battery charger that plugs into an inverter and the inverter runs off of 12 volts on the battery. And that's a joke. I'll bring it in and show you. But, you know, there's there's a, a return. There's a loss and return on that. So eventually, I mean, I don't know how long's the water going to keep generating. Because he's separating the water into three components. And how long will it continue to separate? Because the water is going to end up without, uh, you know, oxygen and hydrogen. And how quickly does that happen? Just like any fuel, it will run out. Um, and, and I have no idea. Will this thing run for 10 minutes and then you have to open the bulb up and, and, and dump the fuel, dump it out and put more water in? Or um, is it is it going to run for, say, three hours or four hours on one load of water? I mean, that's... I, they, I wouldn't I, think it would run very long at all. Uh, the same guy is doing perpetual motion up here on the right-hand side, and that... We know right. that doesn't exist because of losses, you know. Right, but 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 this this specifically I know is not perpetual motion. You now, what, what, I'm what I'm thinking is that the there's only a finite amount of oxygen and hydrogen in the water. He's not replenishing the water in any way. So, you know, it's it's not a sealed cell system. It's, it's got to, you know, you've got to get fresh water from somewhere. So I'm guessing it doesn't work very long. Well, it, there's no reason why you couldn't fe uh, feed it. No, that's what I'm saying. But then it's under pressure a little bit. And he was feeding that tank, you know, the, the filter on the left-hand side. And the other thing is, I mean, how long before those... Um, electrodes for lack of a better word get furred up and uh, they don't produce 
um, you know, they'll build a resistance up on, on the surface. Yeah, no, I, I the, the cleaning and maintenance is definitely a question. Uh, yeah. the, the longevity of it is a question. Um, you know, if, if you can set that up and it'll run for three or four hours like that, it would be worth building. Oh, yeah, but I don't think it will. And the other thing is, it's like my generator is, is dual power. It will run off a of gas and it will run off a of protein, propane. But when it's running off a of propane, it's only producing about 80% of the electricity as it does when it runs off a of gas. Ah. The motor is not anywhere near as efficient off a of propane, although propane at the moment is significantly cheaper. So if you're doing dollar per kilowatt or something, then you're about on par. But, uh, you know, when, when you've got a generator running, to me, the most important thing is not the cost, it's how long it will keep going because, you know, you want to maintain power. That thing, I think, is going to need quite a lot of maintenance to keep it going. But you can buy hydrogen cell cars. I mean, they sell them in California, you know, and I like the idea because you go in and you fill up the tank. The only trouble is, you know, with the hydrogen motor as such, whatever, a generator, if you want to call it that, if it sit there doing nothing, it will actually d diminish. So you can fill up a hydrogen car with hydrogen, leave it, and the, the, you know, the waste is only water, but you can leave it for, I don't know, a couple of weeks and your tank's half empty. Right. So there's a lot of, uh, it's kind of cool though, interesting. Well, that's why I said it, it something, something, it, something can be the future of something without us even understanding it yet. And that's kind of where we're at. I think we're at the very beginning stages of, of understanding hydrogen power. And, um, but I just, I wanted to introduce you guys to it. it. It's something we can actually play around with ourselves if we wanted to. Um, I, I wouldn't mind doing something with it down the road. I, when I saw that, I'm like, I have generators here that I can play with, play with, you know, you create the system and see if it works, see if I can get a generator to run on that thing. Yeah. You know, because if I have all the parts and everything, I can maintain it. I can keep it going and I can keep putting water in it over and over and over, whatever I got to do to keep it going. Because nothing's more important than keeping that air conditioner running. Nothing. <laughs> nothing in the world. Not water, not food, not uh, not sex even really. I mean, seriously, air conditioning, number one thing. So anyway, uh, let's see here. So isn't that some cool stuff? Um, that's about what I had on that. I just I, I thought it would be something very interesting to look at because I was impressed that you that he literally that first guy made that whole thing with egg beaters and uh those silver pot cleaning things and he shoves well, them in there and using metal it was an electrode just like the electrode that the other guy was using but his seemed to be a bit more you know effective or efficient i don't know but yeah i mean it's ugh, i'm gonna look into it that's for sure yeah i but, thought it was uh, fun uh, um project. <laughs> you know, and I also think that not only should we, not only do I, I want to know more about it because I think it's cool and it's something I might play with at some point, but it's also, I think there's a future here for some things. Well, um, so they've got hydrogen cell cars in uh, California and have done for a long time. Yep. And, and like I said, the, the reason if you asked, if you ask the government, um, so how are we doing on uh, helping the hydrogen car people getting their stuff going? They'll go hydro what? Um, yeah, yeah. They well, don't want. They don't want to know anything. Our government doesn't want to know anything about um, no, the left or the right. Don't want to know anything about hydrogen cars um, because there's no way for them to track and tax and everything else that they need to do. And that that's unfortunate that. The, the, the greenest thing we could do for our planet is, is get this technology worked out right here. Not batteries, which basically just move the usage around. Yeah, and are themselves very chemically uh, questionable. Yep. So anyway, that was that's what I had. I just thought you guys would find that. I, I found that so damn interesting. I just was like, wow, that's really cool. All right. Uh, does anybody have anything else on hydrogen power? Did I hear Joseph? I could have swore I heard Joseph in there. 
doing? I'll show you something I got in today. Oh, is that one of those bioeno dealios? Yeah, it's a bioeno. It's a 20 amp hour bioeno. So, wow. And and you got that for me? No. No, I oh, got oh, that. oh, okay. <laughs> no, I didn't get it from you. I got it from uh Powerworks. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, there's a couple right. of things you need to know about uh keep those things don't let them well they're not going to freeze down here but uh if you uh i've got two or three extreme friends who go um camping you know 365 days of the year and you know up north as well you know minnesota and you know the rocky mountains and all the rest of it and as lithium batteries get cold they you know lose a substantial amount of uh, power that's one of the problems with the electric cars. Yeah. The lithium batteries. The uh, now this this is this is uh, lithium ion iron phosphate, but the uh, I don't remember what the chemistry is for the car batteries, but they all have the same issue. Yeah. When you lose when your uh, temperature the ambient temperature gets real low, then you you lose the uh, power. Yeah. So is an issue. Hence the question, you know that there's. Stand, well, there's a lot of jokes about electric cars, we know, but uh, the one I like is, you know, what do you call a Tesla in the winter at Lake, at Lake Tahoe? A miracle. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't yeah. tell you these things, you know? Of course that, not. that doesn't uh, exist on the, uh, the, the um, uh, you know, Tesla website, but... Uh, well, I, I actually like a lot. Of, I mean, I, I like that Tesla's do. I like that these people are innovating. I like it. And I, I'm I'm not I'm I'm purposely not trying to crap all over electric cars. I just they're an option. They're not the future. Yeah. yeah and, and and not every car is gonna be electric, nor is it feasible to make them all electric. Right. Your power now, is not gonna support them all. The uh, I'll tell you what, some of them look really cool. I don't know what's happened. I mean, cars have got really boring over the last, I don't know, 20 years, I guess. I'm but still I was... waiting for my flying car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got that? screwed on that whole deal. We did, didn't we? You know, a bit like Obama and his uh, solar cells. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the other one, where was I? Lost my train of thought then. Oh, yeah, with the cars. I mean, I don't know if anyone's looked, but the latest Hyundai the electric one it looks really really cool you know they, yeah. they put some design work into it it's designed you know it's kind of like the ikea of cars it just you know got lots of functions it looks good uh inside and out i mean the inside is i mean i don't know about you but you look at a tesla inside and it looks you know mm -hmm. dreadful looks like a wawa toilet yeah <laughs> Well, I, I, I believe that there's, there's definitely some, some future in different kinds of things, but I, I don't, I don't like, uh, I, I tell you, I do like the hybrid cars. I think there's some future in the hybrid where we run the motor as we need it and we run a much smaller motor and then we use electric motors to move the car. That seems to be a fairly efficient thing. It's funny how it's not, it didn't seem to catch on that well. People want to go right to electric. Well, that's no good because you're going to get out on the highway and you're going to get in a blizzard and you're going to freeze to death. Yeah. Uh, they, they've kind of got it sorted in, uh, well, unfortunately, China with the Neo and in, uh, in Europe with various models like the Kia and whatever, is where they have interchangeable battery packs. Yeah. So basically, the batteries are screwed into the bottom. So you drive into a gas station and you know the, the car drives itself after that it drives into the bay the batteries are taken out the new batteries are put in and you drive away it's like a eight ten minute thing which is very similar to us now driving our gas station the gas cars into a gas station filling up and then drive away and we've got another 300 plus miles to to do it and they're doing that with the neos with the uh um, the kia and stuff but only in europe here we've got carried away with these charging stations and it's such an investment in, in those now that we're going to live with those for the next 20 years because it's going to take them 10, 15 years to, to get a return on investment. They're not going to... Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was a good investment. No, I don't. 
I think it was a bad investment. It was a bad investment. We're, we're investing in simply just other ways to use the same energy. Yeah, and uh, technology, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm for green energy, but let's not fool ourselves. Yeah. You know, um, that's the biggest problem with this. Washington with Washington is trying to, to fool us with it. But uh, I keep asking the question, why does Warren Buffett keep buying Occidental Petroleum stock? Yeah. Yeah. Follow well, the it's, money. It's always the same. Follow the money. Well, that's the yeah. thing. It's like, why Why is, uh, you know, you know who the, the biggest carbon footprint in our country is these people that fly around the world talking about global warming. Yeah. Um, like Al Gore and uh, Al Gore, yeah. because the, the warming's been caused by the cooling. <laughs> that guy. And uh, and then John, uh, John, I have absolutely no personality, Kerry. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm... Uh, John Kerry, and if you ask me tomorrow, I will again say that I'm John Kerry. Uh, but the, uh, uh, he, that crazy girl from Sweden or wherever it is. Oh God, I wish I had that. I wish I had that piece to play. Greta Thornburg, in that her? Yeah, Greta yeah. Thornburg. Oh my God, you know. She, yeah, she is Greta, a, she Greta is Thunberg. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if I can. I, I might try something crazy here. I don't know if it'll work though. <laughs> I I made. If you guys want to play around with it, since we don't have a lot on the on the on the slate tonight, um, I uh, I made a funny thing with her, uh, like a movie trailer, and it was so good. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to play it. But let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. Um, it was it was a really good one. It you know she. She's one of these, she's a little pestilent little bitch. She doesn't know what's going on in the real world. You know what I mean? Yeah. All she, all she knows is what her mom and daddy, the extremist crazy folks tell her. Um, and it's like, I got, I got, I can tell you this yelling and screaming at people and throwing shit uh, it has never solved a problem ever. Nope. Uh, and that's that's her biggest problem is there's no solutions there. It's just it's climate. It's you know what the climate's always changing. We don't know who's changing it. We don't know what's going on. The best thing we can do right now is to use the free market system to work towards better solutions. Yeah. And the Not other thing we have to do is adapt because yep. you know what I think we have no control whatsoever over the climate. It changes, but I don't think we got any control over it. I don't think I, I don't think we have near as much control over it as they think we do. All right, yeah. I'm going to try something here. This is a little crazy. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm trying to play this on my old computer because I'm signed into this meeting, or at least I thought I was. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I'm signed into this meeting. So let me turn on my audio on this computer hooked up to... Uh, Let's try stereo mix and see if you guys can hear that. This just takes a minute. Let me try this here real quick. Uh, you guys can't hear that. I can't even hear that. I don't think it's working. It says it's on remote audio. Anyway, let's um, while I'm pulling that up, let's do this. Let's go around. Does anybody have anything they want to tell us about uh, tonight that they got or anything going on? Well, I've got, I got a few things. Yeah, go ahead. While I'm, I'll, I'll pull this stuff up so we can listen to a few funny things later. Uh, yeah, Jim, I completely agree. Uh, that the video on hydrogen was so interesting to me uh, that I kind of broke genre here to bring it to you guys tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm just skeptical about it. I mean, it's well produced, and the things that he built were well built. But I'm not so sure that it is. Okay. Well, I got. I've still been playing around with my antenna, but we won't worry about that. What I've uh, my mast and stuff. That's really good. I was going to go to Pota to, this morning. Went outside, turned the, uh, press the button on the car, and nothing. Uh oh. So I went and got my other car. One of the other cars. I didn't know I got you had an electric car. Uh, jumped it, and it killed. The other one. So the battery actually had a physical short inside Ooh. of it. And was sucking, which was which was a, a pain. You had a cell and, go completely bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's a Subaru. The battery was four and a half years old. Um, so, that's a long time in Florida. I generally get three yeah. years out of a battery down here. Yeah, so I can't complain. 
Um, I don't buy expensive so, batteries, though. I buy the cheapest car battery you can get because you. the only difference is the warranty, and I don't care about the warranty. I buy it. I use it for three years. I throw it out. Well, actually, I did that last time. On the Jag, I, I bought the more expensive one with a five-year warranty, and they did replace the battery under because it went to about three and a half years. They replaced the battery, but then the warranty on the new battery only lasted a year and a half. Because they oh. took the three and a half years off of the first one off of it, so it didn't seem such a good deal. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's prorated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this one, uh, I did go for the slightly more expensive one because uh, it is warranted longer, and it uh, you know it was a little different the way it was designed and whatever. Supposed to be better. You're under pressure. You know, I wanted it fixed, uh, but I did a quick read up and evidently these single cell ones rather than the multi-cell one are a better bet because your car even if a cell goes short it's it's like you've got six batteries you haven't got one there's still you know leclanche cells or whatever you know still a lead acid battery but you've got six of them rather than um just the one so anyway you know that was that was my uh stuff on that so i found some cool things let me just go into the sharing on my, oh, where are we, Zoom? So I go share, and I go to there. So I find some really, oh, God, it's done it again. Bloody uh, hell. Bloody hell. I had all this working just now, but it keeps defaulting. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, that's because okay. that's you're on this net. That happens to me every night. Yeah. You want to show so, somebody something. That's what you've, seen, you've seen some of these pictures. This is, um, you know, I think I ended up there somewhere. Uh, but what I've bought is these, uh, these kind of hook things. They're warranted for life. They'll replace them. And this tube fits in there to screw them in, and they screw into the ground, which is really cool because what I've done is at the bottom of the mast, I just, you know, I added these loops. This is a, a, a earlier one. I've got three loops on all of them now. And I buy these, I use these for everything from hooking cars to dog walk, you know, you name it. These things are re really cheap, uh, you know, uh, what they called? Um, uh, you can buy like 20 from Amazon for like eight bucks. And Fair I just, through, I don't even hook through there now. I hook sure. through the side. It's not a piton, is it? It's some kind of climbing apparatus. But anyway, I did that, and then I played around you know, at the top. Where one little girl. <laughs> I think it's. I think I might have figured this out. I'm, okay. Yeah, All right. We'll, I we'll think go I to know that. Who this is. Well, you think you finish your finish your thing up there? It's okay, fine. So anyway, there it is in work. You know. You no rush. No rush. Screws it in, and uh, this is the early prototype one, but. So now the, the mast actually stands on its own and I've been using it vertical. So um, we won't worry about that too much. Right. Now, oh, that's cool. Where the stakes yeah. come from. And they're really cheap. You know, they're not expensive. Warranty for life. Where'd you get them? Uh, Amazon. Now, if ah. I can show you the link. Hang on one second. If I kill the... If I get out of that. Okay. Uh, stop sharing. Now I want to go to... Oh, share again. Hang on. Share again. I really got to get my act together. I'll go to there. Go to Amazon. Okay, well, these are ones I was going to show you. Well, let me show you these first, and then we'll go into the other ones. These, where is the camera, are silicone and they're reusable wire ties. Oh, wow. And they're really, really good. And as you can see... And they're good on the environment. Yeah. And, and, and silicon, you know. So since I made friends with Rita the Rubber Raver, who is silicon, my life has changed. Um, <laughs> we won't go there. Um, but you get 30 <laughs> for like 15 bucks. So they're 50 cents a piece. But they're reusable. And I mean, they are really good. I am buying a bunch load... You can get a better deal because um, I'm going to give them as Christmas presents. 
but they're really good so that's that we'll get back to the the other things in a minute now the other thing that i bought let me uh go uh looks like a bunch of little plastic snakes yeah, let, yeah it let does. just uh with one big eye yeah yeah, yeah it, it's, it's their silicone so they you know they can stretch the s out of them and they don't uh you missed the joke oh i did i missed it sorry <laughs> not, not attention uh, um okay now the next one i bought these now they you know they don't look anything special except where am i here they are all stuck together these are silicone with rare earth magnets in the end. Oh, wow. So, and these are great for, you know, tying coax up. I've been using them for a million things. I'll tell you again, these are, are gonna go on my bucket list for Christmas. And you get 20 of those. You can buy them cheaper than that. That, that was just one that I pulled out. Um, but the magnets are really strong. Look, I mean, that magnet will hold all of those, uh, um, you know, with no problem whatsoever. And uh, the, the other, I was using them on my antenna and stuff, playing around, holding coax to the mast and everything. The only trouble is they're so strong <laughs> that these things keep catching screws all over the place. But that's another um, goodie. Um, and of course, I'll come to that in a minute. I've got the com new computer. Uh, now, these things. Now, maybe I'm late to, uh, late to the, uh, the game, but I don't know if anyone has seen these. I bought three different sorts. These are really cool. So this is one in four five out so i'm going to use this i've actually used it in my portable setup on my ground you open this clip which isn't you can see the clip pops up there's a hole in the end you push your wire into there and close it and it's a 20 amp contact so you can i've been using this for the ground so you know, I don't know if, it, you know, I mean, I never leave anything the same. So I can just take the ground out and, you know, just by flipping one of these up. And they are 20 amps. You can actually get 40 amps. They're, you know, relatively uh, cheap. But you can get, I mean, all sorts of different flavors. So I bought I bought the oh I'm just gonna see myself. Okay, so I bought these. These have got a little screw in. Now these are for through. And I'm actually using this on a linked dipole at the moment and it works a treat. So basically you pop those up and on the side, I know you can't see it is actually the dimensions for cutting the cable. It's got a little mark there. So you cut the cable to there, you cut the insulation off to there, you just push it in that little hole at the end and close it and it holds the thing. But this one, you can pop them together. Oh, so wow. you can have like a double or triple or four or whatever again not staggeringly expensive not exactly cheap but i mean they're really useful let me just go here uh, you see my history of uh, purchases on amazon yeah those hope all your sex stories don't come up yeah <laughs> i'll tell you a quick story about that um, <laughs> he's when, always when got I, a story that guy yeah i know when i moved down here uh, a bunch of my friends up north helped me pack because I sold my house for a really good uh, 
amount of money up north but I had to be out I put it on the market on the 6th of June and I, I'd lived there 30 20 years and I had to be out I don't know what it was the 7th of July or something like that yeah. so a bunch of my friends helped me move and then and I, I you know th threw away a lot of stuff I gave away a lot of stuff because nothing you got up north works down here etc etc and then when I was when the guys came with the pods I had two pods they loaded up the pods and there was this box that said sex toys on it and they're no friends of mine you know I'm thinking oh what the hell is that you know so I get here and of course I bought a house rented a house and sold a house in one day in less than two hours in fact so I got here and I moved into a rental house and all my boxes went into the garage and whilst we were unloading and putting the box in there this box passed in front of me and said text sex toys and I think oh shit what the hell is that you know but I never got the chance to see it when I moved in opened the box it was full of coat hangers <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy oh boy somebody, so anyway somebody's kind of weird there <laughs> coat hangers yeah I've got weird friends yeah. Okay, so those are those. They're 12, 13 bucks for uh, 40. So again, it's not, you know. You can make antennas out of those. And then somebody asks you what you make antennas out of, you say sex toys. Yeah. Okay, the last one. <laughs> yeah. The last one is this. This is a kit of 40, uh, 36 pieces, a little bit more expensive. But these are actually, they go up to, I can't remember what the amperage is on these. They go up to higher. So I bought some higher ones. But the same thing, sim similar thing. Okay, that's the wires go in there. They've got the marks on the side for cutting the wires off. These things pop up. Like that. You push the wire in the hole. So these join wires together. So... If you know, if you're putting, I don't know, like a, a new socket up in the ceiling or something like that, these are so much better than using wire nuts and prattling about with all that. And then they close up like that on top of the wire. So they're a bit like power poles. I did break one, took it apart to see what it's like on the inside. And it's a bit like two, two curved surfaces that fit tightly behind each other around the wire. So... Um, you know. Anyway, that was. Uh, those are, those my, are uh, really cool. Lady, yeah, I think they're good. I mean, you can see you get them on. Uh, I forget what you got to call them up. They're they're called. Oh yeah, okay. They're not levers and they're not nuts. Okay, but they're called lever nuts. <laughs> All right. So, good. A uh, goodbye. So you know, I spent some money at Amazon this week. But I tell you, of all of them, all the bits and pieces I bought, these things are unbelievable. They are absolutely fantastic. You use them just like you use a, a, a regular um, uh, wire tie, except they come apart in seconds, literally. Now, I think you can get longer ones, but, you know, and it's really good. I mean, you can really pull this and it doesn't come apart. You've got to really work it to come apart. And it tightens right up. Um, I, I say these are my, uh, I'm putting an order in for a bunch. Solves my Christmas uh, problems. Okay, then the other thing that I'm really impressed with is the laptop. That hundred and forty nine dollar laptop which i've lost the uh, from best buy is unbelievable the quality is it's just like hey um it, it? yeah unshare your screen unshare it you're right there you go um it, it's it's not you know it's a, it's a good case. I had a I had a computer with that brand name and it was pretty good. Yeah. Asus. I don't know if that's the name or. Yeah. Asus. Uh, the only Asus. Thing is, it's, it's a bit Mickey Mouse about it is this keyboard. It's it's a regular, uh, 
you know, finger activated keyboard. A touchpad, you yeah. Switch, your touchpad, but you can switch it on and make these things as a number pad. That's kind of weird. There's like a little switch in there. You can actually feel it. It's like a contact um, thing. But no, I mean, this thing, it's not cheap. You know, you, the case is as good. I looked in Sam's Club um, at this. The Sam's Club and, and Walmart sell these a lot. So does Best Buy. Uh, in fact, the top end, the uh, top of the range of this is supposed to be one of the fastest laptops on, on earth. But the case is not significantly less than their higher end models. Now, obviously, you know, we don't get the ports. I've lost a, a port because my mouse is, uh, needs a little USB dongle in it. That's all the ports you've got with it. You've got one HDMI, two USBs. I think one's a two and one's a three. Yeah, Difficult to tell. And it runs off at 19 volts. I'd love it if it ran off at 12, but I'm going to go and get a... a um, uh, you know, one of those buck and boost jobbies. And it doesn't take that long to boot up. What operating system did it come with? It comes with 11. Oh! So at the moment it's running 11, but it does run um, N3 FJP or M3 N3 FJP or whatever it is software. Did you create a Microsoft account or did you get a workaround? No, I, I had to create a Microsoft account. No, they're, I'm never doing that. <laughs> no. But you do get whatever, you know, 20 gigs of uh, cloud. But, uh, you know, that's it. That's not bad. For 140, I could have bought one for 129, which only had 60 uh, gigs of uh, hard drive. And something else, I can't remember. This one's got 128 gig hard drive. Oh, and better graphics. It's got the 500 <laughs> graphics or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I might just get me something like that at some point uh, for my, um, you know, for just for a remote control computer. Yeah. Well, here it is. It's running the uh, uh, N3 FJP because I bought it for. Uh, you know, taking out, the idea was I wanted to take out in the field and not worry about it. And, you know, well, you know, I sent you the info. I sent Joseph the info and Joseph said for the extra 20 bucks, get the one with the bigger hard drive. So this has got oh, yeah. 28 meg gig hard drive and it's the M squared two or M squared E or whatever it is. Um, memory, not the, yeah. uh, S, uh D, D, S. probably can't do any upgrades on it. No, no, no. I mean, it's you know, it's what it is. I mean, you know. Yeah, but if you're just needing a, if you're just needing a basic laptop to to remote in, what I've found is a laptop using like Chrome Remote Desktop or Team Viewer doesn't have to be all that powerful. Oh. As long as the system you're dialing into is plenty powerful, it works yeah. great. And that's yeah. I, I've got this really nice laptop that I bought a long time. You know, I bought two two and a half years ago, and it's been a great laptop. Um, but the screen's starting to have problems and different things. I want to just make this a stationary laptop. I'm thinking about buying one of these to be my little remote laptop for remoting into my system. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know if you saw what you were talking, but it, I mean, it logs into everything really quick. It's, it's not, it's not a slouch by any means. I mean, we're not, we're not talking a thousand dollars here. We're talking $149, including yeah. shipping, including shipping. But really, you know, and this is for Poda, was the main reason for getting it. I right. probably will convert it uh, back down to 10. Because I... oh, we lost your audio. Yeah, you went totally. Is that better? That's better. That works. So anyway, you said you could convert 11 down to 10. Only it's pretty bad when a downgrade is an upgrade. Welcome to Windows. Yeah, that's yeah. like they're downgrading eight to seven, upgrading eight to seven. They used to. Yeah, I actually got one that was eight, and I down converted it to seven, and I had to download all kinds of weird drivers and everything. But I finally got it working. Yeah, don't care. 
Well, that's anyway. the thing that's worrying me is the uh, USB drivers for WSJSAT doesn't uh, seem to work on 11. Uh, but I haven't had much time. You know, I've been playing around with the antennas and stuff, so I thought I'll stick with 11 for the time being. But anyway, you know, if you, uh, you, I can give you the link if you guys want it. You can get it from Best Buy. You can't get it from Best Buy stores. You can only get it online, limited time, etc., etc. But all good. So there you go. Right. That's the uh, contributions from Bonita Springs. <laughs> all right. They got an accent down there in Bonita. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's, uh, I wanted to play this for you guys. Uh, I, I've dialed into my work, so I'm able to actually pull up and play things uh, that are on the screen here at work. So let me let me pull this back up here and see if I can get it. Let's see if you guys can hear this. I don't know what this is going to sound like. This is a movie trailer I made for Greta Thunberg. <laughs> um, she, uh, she came out and was cackling and screaming and throwing shit like she always does. And... Uh, uh, I took some of her speech and I voiced it and I made a movie trailer. You know, where one little girl stands in the way of disaster. No more exploitation of people and nature and the planet. No more exploitation. Where everyone is the problem. She's the solution. No, blah, blah, blah. Boy, that is that is really bad. That's not going to work. Let me uh, let me see if I can download these two things. Greta, Greta and her sister AOC. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna email this to myself. Is what I'm gonna do and just play it here. Uh, let's see, E and J. But anyway, um, yeah. While I do that, let me. Uh, Okay, so does anyone have anything else they would like to go over tonight? Can you hear All me? right. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, awesome. Micah. Awesome. No, I'm just testing. Um, I finally got my microphone working, so I'm Where playing around go. with that. We got you. You are loud and clear. It sounds good. Oh, glad to hear it. Thank you. What is this thing doing? It's like um, I'm, I'm pulling up a loading screen, but it's going to take a while to load. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, I want to tell you guys about the computer. Um, I don't I don't know if Joseph's back yet, but um, we, as you guys know, we didn't get it going last uh, Friday. So I think uh, we, we probably need to tell you guys what happened. We took it all back apart again. Uh, I took it all back down to the basic elements again. Uh, and we started putting it back together and we got to the BIOS setup again. Remember when we were flashing the new BIOS at the very beginning yeah i we i think we should have waited a little bit longer and pressed that white button again when we were done because once we did that um i put it back together and it fired right up so <laughs> we just literally reflashed the bios uh, I had to take out, I had to take the uh, cooler off. I had to take the car, the chip out. Everything had to come out. The only thing we were, we could leave was the hard drive and we took everything else out and then we restarted it and, uh, and, and did the BIOS flash over again. And it worked. Um, anyway, so far the performance on it seems wonderful. Uh, I actually, uh, it, at this point, I, I'm at, I gotta tell you, it's, it's obviously way beyond the fastest computer I've ever owned. Um, it is, um, it's, it's just a really, really good compute computer. Um, I, I still having a few issues that, uh, we're going to work on. Like, uh, for instance, it's not wanting to play. I got a game. I got a game that still kind of locks up sometimes and things like that, but it's an old, old, old game. And that's probably just all it is. Um, we went ahead and put, uh, we put another two, uh, two slot video card on it so now i have seven video slots and uh, i've already got uh five of them working here i had to buy three um display port to hdmi uh cables which arrived today i bought a little light kit for it too i'm going to put the little magnetic light strips around the outside you know and um i had to do it right i mean come on seriously uh but it looks good you can see it back here in the background the, the, those round things you see there that's that 
that's the case there. Um, it's got the, uh, you can see this is the, wow, that's loud. I don't know who's uh, crumpling. Oh, sorry, it's me playing around with my bags. Sounds like a rat in the wastebasket. Sorry. Uh, he said, so, I, 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 yeah, okay. I, no, it's no problem, dude. Seriously, I just play no, with yourself just, all you want. We're just playing with you. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you want to play with yourself, go ahead. Um, well, but I was, uh, yeah. going to give you a demonstration of the uh, oh, these new collector connectors. Maybe, you know, you, you might have an opportunity at CNN if you do that. CNN, the Communist News Network. <laughs> the most trusted name of propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> oh my lord. So there you go. There's those magic connectors. And see if oh, you want yeah. to take it off. You just open it up and it pulls off. I wasn't so sure it wasn't a giant toothbrush there for a minute, but no, that's not. There you go. And, and it's really solid. I like that. Yeah. Me too. So sorry about that. Hold no, you're fine. Off. No, you're fine. It's all good. All good. Uh, let me see here and get this other one up here. All right. And uh, let's see here. The There's no tropical activity at all. Uh, there's nothing to even speak of out there. It'd be fun if I had something to talk about, but there's just nothing. Can you guys hear that? that? Just is great stuff. Could you guys hear that audio? Yeah, I heard a, a bong. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Any noise. I'm trying to see if I've got the audio on. Let's see here. Leave computer audio. I hate trying to figure this out every time. See, I had this turned on on my other computer, but it's not turned on on this one, and I don't know how to do it. I thought maybe it was no it's not there it's not under sound you'd think it'd be under sound audio settings oh well everything's a pain in the ass all right let me try one other thing here um Okay, so nobody has anything else. That's uh, that's what we got. That's uh, that's it, huh? All right, let me see if I it's can just... the dog days of summer. <laughs> it is. I'll tell you what. This this Saharan dust layer that we've had come in has not been uh, not been good at all. We just heard him say on the weather tonight that it's gone now. Yeah, it's gone. It'll be back on Monday or something. So the thunderstorms will start back up. Yeah, of course. Make sure Rainy you watch your antennas. Yeah, well, I mean, the sun this week, I think one day had 35 sunspots on it. Yeah, it's it, we are definitely, uh, we are definitely, yeah. Great this afternoon on 20 meters, I made uh, 19 contacts in an hour on uh, with uh, on QRP uh, CW. So working pretty good. I think it would take me that long to make one <laughs> CW uh, contact. <laughs> uh, well, this is uh, these. Are, this is the uh, what's called the SST, the slow speed test. It's kind of like a contest. Oh, it's, okay. Uh, Hello, goodbye, thank you, ma'am. Next QSO, that type of thing. Yeah, they used to have a great contest on Thursday nights called FT8 Off, which lasted one hour. And it was shown, the guys who were organizing it, it was live on YouTube. And I don't know what happened, but for some reason or other, YouTube got all bent out of shape and the whole thing's gone. And YouTube it was really, gets bent out of shape about everything. Yeah, I know. It was really fun. And I'm that talking. That's absolutely ridiculous that YouTube would have a problem with that. I know. I know. Well, that's just ignorant. That, there, there's one guy who... Um, He's like a travel, he's up there. I mean, I don't know. He works for one of the big companies. He's no, a travel uh, talker. You know, he, he goes to different places, comes back, makes a video, uh, you know, gives a presentation about all these different you know, countries and stuff. And they've just dropped him um, completely, taken away his email, his, his, 
the whole works because they thought he was monetizing in countries that he's not allowed to monetize in. I don't know. But, you know, these companies are just getting a little bit over top. You guys can't hear that, can you? No. Nah. Hear what? Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. They, they, I am very frustrated right now, but that's all right. I uh, I absolutely hate the way Windows does everything. Me too, with a passion. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely ignorant the way Windows has got their sound system set up here. I cannot, I cannot get this thing to switch over properly to the right sound. It's just amazing. I've been trying here for 10 minutes to get this thing to, to play sound and it won't play it. I, I know, try. I know, I know you the hate machine you're having trouble with or one of the older ones. That's the new machine, but it's because it's all my settings are in the old machine. So and so you guys can't hear that, which is is freaking me out why you guys can't hear that. So we can't see the video either, so I don't know whether no, there's no video. Oh, there's no it's, video. It's yeah, it's audio. audio because it's just radio that I do stuff for. Um, man, this is just really pissing me off. Well, currently, uh, including you know the far side and everything else, there are fifty sunspots. Currently, I mean, facing us, there's four right at this very moment. So that's pretty good. Are, are they actually ejecting the... No, no, there's some of them. There's a couple of new ones that are popping up that they say... Uh, yeah, there's one... Once uh, they AR do that... 3068 near the sun's southeastern limb that is still very, very small, but it's growing rapidly. rapidly. Uh, tripling in size since yesterday. It merits washing as possibly a source for near future activity but how uh, long does it take to get here one of those uh, i mean it's you, like it's not sh a short amount of time it takes a week or so yeah i think it oh that's better we can hear that oh, what the heck? it's um it's a bit like a bus you know you wait around for three or four hours and then you get three all at once yeah so i don't know i mean some of them travel really, really fast, and I can't remember which ones they are. Ian will probably know. He's more into this than I am. I'm just trying to fill, <laughs> fill in while he's playing, take the pressure off. Uh, but uh, basically, I know like the X and the M's, they get here pretty quick. But I know the CMEs, they take, you know, a couple of three days. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Because we've been getting a lot of MCLs, but they're saying that, you know, those are those non-salient clouds. Uh, but they're, they've been caused by the spaceships. They've kind of, we're getting more spaceships this year than ever. Or whatever you want to call them, space rockets, space whatever. Oh, yeah, that's the inoculacid clouds. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to fill in, what, take the pressure off you, Ian, sorry. No, you're fine. I appreciate it. I've, I think I've got it here. You guys ready? Yep. Here we go. In a world where one little girl stands in the way of disaster. No more exploitation of people and nature and the planet. No more exploitation. Where everyone is the problem, she's the solution. No more blah, blah, blah. We're sick and tired of it and we're going to make the change. Whether they like it or not. She single-handedly plans to save the planet. They all keep on going for too long. The power of one little girl. It's not going to let them get away anymore. We are not. In this time of disaster, a beacon stands alone. Because who are we? And what are we going to do? <laughs> Greta Thunberg stars in Not With My Planet, You Don't. What do we want? What do we want it? Rated R starts Friday at select locations. Starts Saturday everywhere. <laughs> Even in your underwear. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? Here's here. I'll I'll give you one more. Dream of going up to her and sitting down next to her. Imagine being in the perfect world. Taking her in my arms and saying, "Look at me. Listen to me." Imagine a world where everything goes just right. You will survive. You will have a good family of your own and three children. For Hillary Clinton, this is not the perfect world. And as hard as it might be to imagine, your daughter will grow up and become the president of the United States. Hillary Clinton stars in. So I'm going to do everything I can to make my case, and you know, then the voters get to decide. The speech that was never given. Rated R starts Friday at select locations. Starts Saturday everywhere. Yeah, we're making some good movies. <laughs> What's the fun part is we don't actually have to make the movie. It rated BS in Panavision <laughs> yeah, and Practical. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Definitely rated BS. <laughs> I love uh, that. I've got a bunch more too, but it gets very partisan from there. <laughs> so we'll just probably leave it alone. Let me switch things back around here. All right. Because your vid your audio is coming out from a different spot than your video is. Yeah, I know it is. There we go. That's why let me turn this one off there. There we go. How about that? Yeah. Okay. No, I was actually talking to you guys on my backup computer. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy, but whatever. All right. Uh Joseph, is he in yet? Okay, it's no biggie. He he may or may not even be here. He's uh he went to a big ham thing and uh, uh yeah. they had a bit, they had an auction and so you know how it is when they start auctioning off ham radio oh. equipment. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, it's like uh it's like in Vegas. You got to go take more money out of your account. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's still he's still at the radio thing. He won't be home for about an hour. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I appreciate you letting us know that. Uh, let me, why am I still getting this audio over here? It's driving me nuts. Okay, so I'm, I'm a little bit ignorant on this, but I gather that Micah is Joseph's brother. Is that right? Yep, that's yep. correct. Okay, hi, great. Micah. Hello, how you been? Hey, good, you? Uh, pretty good. I've been watching for a while, and I have talked once or twice. Yeah, I keep I'm seeing fine. your name come up, but we never hear you, so... Uh... Yep. Mike, know. I think Mike got his license right around the same time or just before I did. I think we talked to each other on the radio back when we first got our ticket. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I was here when it was still a radio net because uh, I had a radio, but I don't have a microphone. Uh, I do now, but I didn't have a microphone for quite a while. I finally do. So, yeah, here I am. Well, that's cool. We love the young folks getting involved. This is yeah, such a definitely. it's such a fun hobby that I, I just hope never actually gets lost on the people out there. That would just be sad. It would. It would. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it's just such a unique thing that most people just don't get into it. Uh, it's just something that only one in a thousand or something people get into, unfortunately. But I believe that we could get more people involved if we if we start looking in the right places. Um, yeah. I just I, I don't know where the hell to do that at this point, because I'm like, OK, I got to I got to figure out a way to get some younger folks in here that want to, they want to start a little tech net and do some crazy stuff. And it's hard to find uh, ways to get to younger people. I thought about what, where do we go? Where do, where do you start? Do you, do you start with a flyer on the bulletin board at the university? I mean, uh -huh. where, where literally I, I'm, I'm asking, I'm putting this out there for everybody. Where, where would you start? I mean, you know, I don't see a, a lot that the local clubs all do something. I'm not saying they're not trying, but I'm just saying, where, what do you do? Where, where do we go from here to try to get some some more of the younger well, folks? What we're doing in our club, there's two of us, actually. Um, the AARL has got an educational program and they've got a new guy. He used to be a teacher. And I'm, I'm convinced that, um, you know, the, the way to go is teachers at school get the science teacher yes the aarl will run a course for a week and they'll pay for everything you have to pay 100 dollars. that's all you have to do they pay your airfare your hotel they give you a thousand dollars worth of materials to come home with they pay it all and our club 
we we actually pay the hundred dollars so it, if you can find a teacher that will do it we found two one this year and we've already got one for next year nice um, so they can um, also apply for grants uh, for yes, the equipment yeah, they can get, uh, grants for their school right. up to i think fifteen hundred dollars for the school to to get equipment um you know so i i i think the the arrl are actually their education program I can't remember the guy's name. I actually texted him. Uh, I emailed him, and then we we texted him back and forth, because uh, and I got him to send information um, to the technology. Uh, fortunately, Collier County is really going all out in, in technology. They sent two teachers technology. Well, they're not even teachers now. They're technology curriculum coaches. They sent them to New Orleans to the Apple teaching thing a couple of weeks ago. Um, which was really good. And, um, you know, Collier County of, uh, you know, declared, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to be fairly quickly that every single student will either have an iMac, no, an iPod, an iMac, uh, an iBook, sorry. And the, all the teachers will get a PowerBook and all the schools are equipped with these big screens now where you know you touch the screen and it comes out on the kids computers and everything else so they're they're really going in for it on technology wise which is kind of cool so uh, we've been trying to push the actual technology teachers um which are basically the science teachers to get interested in ham radio and as i say we found two um and there are more there are more that are interested they can't commit at the moment because obviously it's a huge learning curve for them and most of the time they're doing this outside of their own, uh, you know, job. They're still teaching and they're still, you know, learning technology and whatever. So personally, I think that's the way to go. And I, I'm, I must admit, I'm quite proud to be a member of the ARRL because just purely of what they're doing. Just that, just the education thing. Um, so I don't mind giving them more money. Um, Glad to hear it. I I after my experience with them they'll get no more of my money but i understand that's cool yeah, yeah I know. um you know that i tried for six months to contact them about joining my club and they never would call me back yeah, so and i don't know if they that's because seem of, to respond much better with email but um well i i was i was sending i sent emails to our regional coordinator our state coordinator um i are, send them to all yeah i know that's well that's it's like anything else. The ARRL is an absolute hot mess that has some really good people and really good programs within it. I think we, it's safe to say that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, sorry, the, pro in some program. respects, I, I, you're right. They need leadership, Rick. But and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dave. But I think in some respects, they've got way too much leadership. It's all just it's all a bunch of bosses running around with titles. And um, where it, the old saying used to say, "Too many chiefs and not enough Indians." Yeah, yeah. I've never met anybody from the ARRL. I've been to about thirty-five ham events in two and a half years. I've or two years. I've never met anybody from the ARRL that's a representative from there. So I would not know. Um, I tried for eight months to get a task book signed off, and they couldn't manage that. So, um, like, like I said, I'm I'm good. We don't need them, but. I support what they do if it supports what we do. Yeah. Yeah, I met a bunch of them up at uh, Orlando, uh, not last year, two years ago now, I guess. This year I only went for the day. Next year I'm going to go for the five. Um, and the year before I went for five days. And I spent quite a long time on the booth. They have a big booth at Hancation and uh, talking to you know various ones. That's the only time I've ever met. I mean, both of our representatives uh, for the ARRL, I believe, live kind of like Miami or somewhere over that way. Right. So, uh, you know, it's a bit of a haul. But they did come. I invited them to our winter field day, uh, not this year, the year before. I sent a letter inviting them, and they did come. They came over. Interestingly enough, they came over in a Red Cross Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. they, they both do stuff you know with the red cross and you know like the arl work with the red cross so you know i'm not objecting to that at all but you know it was interesting they did come and i think they went up to fort myers afterwards 
Mm. Uh, I know they couldn't find out whether uh, Marco Island Club was doing anything. But, um, you know, they're all volunteers, you know, they don't get paid. That's the trouble, you know, and anybody other than the people that work up in headquarters, uh, you know, it's like our club, you know, and, and the same with Fort Myers. No one's paid. We're all volunteers and, uh, you know, and we tend to be older people as well. So, you know, it's uh, it's difficult. But yeah, that's why it's great to see people like Micah and uh, Joseph and stuff taking an active part in the club. Because it is, it's a great hobby. And, it, you know, if you're into computers, if you're into video, if you're into audio, you know, into... Yeah. You know, FT8 is almost like a video game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's... Uh... Oh, well, it, it's the ARRL is one of those things where it's there, and I, I guess I'm glad it's there. I wish it worked better. I wish it was there for me when I was trying to start a group. But it is what it is. I, uh, I don't hate it. I just, I, I wish it was better. Yeah, I think we all do. But, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, I, I, like I said, I don't want to sit here and just badmouth this and badmouth that because you, we could do that all night, especially oh. with them. Um, yeah, we could also talk about HRD if we're in there and we want to just really badmouth people. <laughs> um, I, I have very few people I don't get along with, and uh, the, those are two of them. But, um, but yeah, anyway, I, I, I think the, the my biggest problem with ham radio has been um, the inflexibility, you know, just a bunch of older folks that do it the way it's been done for the last hundred years. And that's the way we're going to do it. And we're not really interested in any new ideas and, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's why I think you're starting to see a lot of newer groups popping up like ours, small teams where they're just, we're not looking to create uh an oligarchy where we've got three or 400 people in the group that all pay us money. And then we just, the 13 of us sit here and do what we want to do and have fun with it. You know, I, I think what, what, what a lot of these newer folks are wanting is active teams that actually get together and build stuff and work and do stuff. And that was my whole angle for starting this whole thing. And granted, it's been a very slow start, but, uh, but we have fun every weekend, don't we? Yeah. So, you know, it's like uh, absolutely i'm not going to worry about how fast we're progressing or how many people we're getting in or whatever I, I i used to worry about that but i don't equate this to ratings i i equate this to knowledge and ability and i think that uh right now we we are all better off for doing this you know where we uh and it's fun and we enjoy it and i enjoy you guys as company it's the fellowship is a lot of it too you know um do you get a uh count of how many people are on youtube yeah there's a viewer count on there they got a view for more than a few minutes to become a viewer on the viewer count so uh that kind of gives you an idea we've got some videos that have uh 30 40 views we have other videos that have thousands of views it all just depends on uh on what it is the tech nets tend to get uh in the 100 view range where the uh the small little how-to videos that we do every now and then those seem to do really well they do don't they they i think yeah. they, uh, somebody goes online and looks out and says well how do i do such and such and so and so uh yep. that's especially that's if you have a specific model number for a specific product yeah and you're doing a video on on setting it up and and what you think about it those tend to get the most hits and so uh now that I've got my new computer, I'm going to be doing like little product reviews on everything I bought um, and talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, just a real quickie and try to stay as positive as I can and just, you know, give the good and the bad. And here's here's what it is. And here's how much we pay for it. And this where's where you can get it and just do a quick little seven, eight minute video. Um, I've got, I've already got the uh, the video editing software loaded into this computer and probably by this weekend I'll be using it. Uh, to start start editing video. I've been stuck because my little laptop has a hard time editing video. With this computer, yeah, I should I should be able to do, that. do that now. But uh, you know, there's a lot of people who make who make quite a nice living doing that. You know, 
Uh, well, and I, I'm not monetized and I'm not planning to go monetized. No. It's a hobby and I'm, I'm, I'm treating it like a hobby. You know, I work in commercial radio to make money. And I do this too. I, I do this because I'm, I just, I love, I love the folks and I love the, the technology and the stuff. So, yeah. All right. Uh, does anybody, good. what else does you guys have anything? I just want to mention the space weather. We got a solar flux index of 93. That sucks. Uh, normally when we have this many sunspots, uh, and we've got a lot of sunspots right now, um, we, uh, normally you would see a much higher solar and a solar flux index, but for some reason it's down to 93. So the propagation's not really great right now. The good news is though, we're at a K indices of one, which means that the, uh, uh, the magnetic field, the geomagnetic field is very quiet right now. And that will sometimes lend to long distance communication as well. So yeah. kind of good. Uh, I'll tell you, even though the solar cycle, the solar flux is low, the bands are going further into the night. Oh, yeah. yeah. The bands are open longer. They're not open. And I'll tell you, this, this is, I don't know what you guys think about this, but this is something I did for our club a couple of weeks ago. We have a Zoom, we have a tech meeting once a month on Zoom on a Wednesday night, third Wednesday in a month. And I like to do something to provoke people a little bit. So I sent the email out saying that how the sunspots affect your antennas and knowing that they really don't affect your antennas, but they really do affect your antennas. Because if you think about your regular old dipole don't have anything fancy you've got a 40 meter dipole and for that to be anywhere near working effectively it's got to be a quarter at least a quarter wavelength above the ground so on 40 meters that's 10 meters but really to be really effective it should be half a wavelength above the ground which is 20 meters so you know that's what it is. It's physics. You can't do anything about it. And we, we all live where we live. We can't get our antennas up as we'd like. But when the solar activity gets going and the higher bands open up, so when 10 meters opens up, all of a sudden for 10 meters to be effective, it's only got to be a quarter wave above the ground, which is only two and a half meters. So when it, when you get like really effective, half a wavelength above the ground it's only five meters 15 feet well say 16 17 and a half feet or whatever so effectively the solar the better the solar cycle we're working on higher bands but your antennas are working better than the other antennas below <laughs> right so that's my yeah uh, that makes sense kind of yeah there's a lot more to it than we all know that but you know reflective angles and everything else but uh you know it uh so i tell people you know get out there give it a go just give it a go i mean i've since the middle of may i have made at least one contact on six meters every single day uh, even when kathy was in hospital so i managed to get one in and this week i think i've worked i was talking to chris earlier i think i made i made six contacts one after the other six different countries on six meters that's with a hamstick dipole in the attic you know that laptop would make a perfect remote control for your ft8 system yeah well that, that's the next thing is it's gonna well i got one i've got ft8 working on a separate computer and a separate radio right but what i'm saying is is you you take that laptop now and you use a chrome remote desktop yeah. And you remote desktop it into your FT8 computer and you can now sit anywhere in the world and work your FT8 machine. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't get the opportunity to travel, but yeah, I know what you mean. Well, what I want to do is. Well, I mean, you party. travel to your bedroom. I mean, I, I sit at, yeah. I sit at my room a lot and work FT8. I'm sitting there watching TV with my wife and I'll sit there and work FT8 and we talk about the different countries I'm getting and stuff. Yeah. So we, I have a lot of fun with that. And, uh, also, uh, every now and then, if I get bored at work, I'll dial in and see if I can grab grab a QSO real quick. Um, I I just I leave it on all the time, listening and reporting PSK, and then whenever I get a chance, I dial in and I start working stations. I just yeah. I I love remote dialing. I'll I'll be we'll we'll be staying at a hotel room somewhere, 
And if I get bored, I pull up my laptop, dial in, start working FT8 back in Fort Myers. So I, I just, I, it's something I really love. And I've got it now to where I have a laptop that I can remote into every computer in here. I have seven computers that I can remote into and I can control the entire shack from one little laptop. And I even have it on my tablet now. Doesn't work all that good, but I can actually work FT8 from a Android tablet using Chrome remote desktop. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I should get into that. I'm well, telling you, remote operation is a lot of fun because even if we're just talking so you can go sit in the living room with your wife and watch a movie, but you still have your FT8 going on. Yeah. Which is great because if you got FT8 going on, you really don't have to give a shit about anything else that's going on. That's right. Well, you can, uh, you can use FT8X <laughs> or whatever it is. What's the new FT8? That, that oh, the WSJ. OCQ? Yeah, WSJTZ. D DX. Yes, and I don't use the auto much at no. all. There, there's a few exceptions where um, I'm trying to get a certain station, and I, you can set it to just look for one station and stuff like that. But I'm a little scared to walk away and leave my transmitter uh, yeah, on, yeah. A, on, I, a, I on a trigger like not, that. Yeah. If I'm not in here, I make a point, you know, like first thing in the morning, uh, you know, because Kathleen works from home, so we have to be kind of quiet. FT8 superb. My mother in law her bedroom is right next door to mine and she's 92 she can hear a pin drop at a thousand feet but she can't hear anything <laughs> when you ask her to do something <laughs> selective hearing uh, yeah yeah um so you know fta is cracking for that so i i have been making a different you know an effort just just for the fun of it um actually today i work two wyoming stations two wow. wyoming stations i haven't got confirmation yet but on six meters. So, you know, oh, as you know, I'm you convinced that nobody that. actually lives in Wyoming. I don't think Wyoming really exists, but, you know, <laughs> it's still <laughs> that's another sick. story. I think it's just the other half of Montana, but I'm not sure. No, it's just a national park. <laughs> uh, we're probably going to offend the hell out of somebody three years from now when they watch this video, but sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I've... Uh, when things get better and we can tra travel uh, personally, I'm going to make a big effort and go and see what Wyoming looks like. You know, yep. I mean, Cheyenne, which is the capital of Wyoming, is the same size as Bonita Springs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me some idea. Uh, yeah, we sure. Well, I'll tell you what, we live in the state right now. Yeah. We, we have more people moving to Florida right now than I think any other state in the union. Right now, it is harder to find an available U-Haul uh, in California than it's ever been since the U-Haul Corporation started. Um, and right now in New York and New Jersey, there's a very hard time for people to find U-Hauls. And they have a graduated price schedule. I don't know if you guys know this, but yeah. uh, if you're traveling and they don't need that U-Haul to go where you're going, you're going to pay a pretty penny for it. And so what they do is if you're in, let's say you're in uh, Los Angeles, okay, uh, home of the douchebag. And uh, let's say you're there and you want to get a U-Haul and get the hell out of there and move to, let's say, Bonita Springs. Um it's going to cost you $4,500 for that U-Haul. Now, if you're in Bonita Springs and you want to move to LA, 250 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not I mean, lying. It's crazy right now. Yeah. When I worked for a living and I used to work for a, an international, well, not an international company, but I worked nationally and I lived in Pennsylvania, which in the winter, nothing happens. Literally, so I used to come down here and work for. I used to work for um, the, the Coca Cola, but uh, I was a systems engineer for them. I used to come down here, you know, for January, February, March, April, sometimes May, because nothing was going up on North, and um, they and I never ever went to the uh, factory up in. Uh, uh, Bonita, uh, sorry, up in Fort Myers, I always used to work from home. Um, but I used to, they would give me uh, money for airfare and stuff. And I used to think, well, you know, I was a single guy, uh, you know, I'll drive. And I used to rent a car for $7 a day from Enterprise, including insurance, to drive. 
and take cars from here back up north. And I used to take the weekend. You know, I would go, I'll leave on a Friday afternoon, take the weekend, stop at Savannah, stop at DC, stop at right. Annapolis or somewhere like that, you know, and uh, get back up in time. And, uh, you know, I'd do that and I'd make maybe four or five hundred bucks as well as, uh, uh, you know, and I driving's never been a problem for me. So um, I don't get tired doing it. Hmm. So that's what I used to do. So, yeah, I mean, that's been going on for a long time. Well, and it's it's accelerated now faster than ever. Yeah. And you know oh, what's yeah. really cool about it, this whole thing? You know, we picked up a congressional seat this year. Yeah. And, you know, Texas picked up one. New York lost one. And California, California lost one. Yeah. Uh, there's a really good chance that we'll pick up another one next time around in eight years. What is it, eight? I think it's 10 years every 10 every years. 10 years. Yeah. I think we're going to pick up at least one more next time around is the, the curve right now looks like that. Mm -hmm. So um, we're becoming a very powerful state and I love it. And people are moving here. You know, we used to always think uh, people are moving here. They're going to change the politics. We were wrong. People move here because of the politics and they don't want to change the politics. Yeah, and, and yeah, you're right, Jim. U-Haul sounds like Uber special event pricing. Uh, it is. It's it's called demand pricing. It's pricing on demand. And yeah, that's exactly how they do it. If they want that truck where you're going, they'll give you a great deal on it. <laughs> if they don't need that truck where you're going, it's going to cost a lot. It's the same same thing with Uber. When when you go to get an Uber and there, your town has no available Ubers and then one pops up, you're going to pay a little more for it. Uh, where if you're sitting there and there's 50 Uber guys around, uh, you can get an Uber ride fairly cheap. Uh, so that's, I, I kind of get that pricing. And the reason it's like that is because, uh, I, and being someone that drove a cab for, for a year or so, uh, years ago, um, it's difficult. Like you get a concert, you're like, oh man, there's a big concert letting out tonight. That's going to be great for the cab drivers. No, it's not. I get one fare and I'm stuck in traffic for an hour and a half. Yeah. So that's why sometimes event pricing and things like that. Look, it's you want a taxi out there at the Civic Center or whatever. It's going to cost more because it, the guy's got to wait in traffic to get there and then wait in traffic to get back out again. You know, yeah. but um, but yeah, the U-Haul thing is amazing to me because uh, it really shows the dynamic of what's going on in our country right now. And not to get too political, um, but it's interesting. I said on the show uh, three on Trey show three or four times now uh, that the it's my belief that the next civil war has already begun. We're probably in about the second, third or fourth year of it. And the civil war that we're fighting right now is being fought with U-Haul trucks. People are moving to the state where they identify with the people. We don't need the we don't need the Yankees don't need to fight the rebels anymore. What it is, is the, the next civil war is you just need to move to a state that has your ideology. And eventually all the people will end up in the right states. And there was no need for any civil uprising. This is a civil war. We're in it right now. And we basically just need people to get moving. Move your ass. If you like the uh, if you like the politics here, get down here. If you like the politics there, get over there. What's up, Joseph? I just saw Joseph pop up. There he oh, is. He is. Uh, Tell us what's going on, dude. Joseph. Let me run back here so I can uh, talk without interrupting them. Oh, well, if you're busy, I can let you go. I just thought you may no. want to tell us what's going on. No, I'm not busy. What's going down on this here tech net? You're, um, I want to just wanted to say that I was in the car um, when you were playing that YouTube video and it was very smooth and your webcam now is very smooth, much more smooth than it usually is. Oh, yeah. So your new setup is definitely an improvement over the old one. It's I have not seen a glitch all night here I, I, as far now getting things to work. I haven't got everything set up right and everything co cooperating and all that yet. That's got to go. We'll get all that fixed. But as far as glitching and freezing and Anything like that, it's been nothing. This has been glass. Yeah, you've, it was really smooth. The video was playing, at least for me, on cellular data. It was playing not like a smooth 30 frames per second, but it was consistent. 
Right. It was, and I think that was more to do with my connection probably. Well, I was watching the video on my laptop computer. I'm, I'm watching the zoom through zoom on my laptop and uh, it looked like about 15 frames a second, which is good enough to watch a video, uh, you know, a yeah. training video or something. So uh, it's not bad. Not way. Am I like that's with beer or something? What's... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What's your deal? What? Okay. So what did you buy? <laughs> I didn't buy anything yet. Uh, they were just auctioning a bunch of the stuff. There was some, there was a couple older radios, which were neat. Uh, but the rest of the stuff was like, um, well, one of the items was like, like lawn design software from 2002. What? Like uh, you, you can like plan out what you want your yard to look like that kind of thing. Oh, wow. Did they have so, a membership to prodigy? <laughs> it was a lot of stuff kind of like that it was just stuff people didn't want yeah, and we're wow. trying to get rid of it so I, I didn't buy i you know i did get though i got this little card here it's like an ohm's law calculator for i got it for free because no one wanted it radio shack, <laughs> radio shack. i got I, I want it just because it says radio shack on it <laughs> yeah so i got that that's kind of cool um but other than that i didn't i didn't get anything they're still auctioning stuff but the only stuff left was just didn't look really that amazing so I'm not getting any of that, but um, I did get uh, one of my friends to come down with the antenna analyzer, and we analyzed the antennas on my roof finally because my analyzer broke, and we discovered that uh, the two meter antenna, uh, the connector on it that I put on there is 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 junk because sometimes it would read really nicely and look beautiful, and the other times it would be like crazy all over the graph. So I've got to do a new connector. But other than that, I was really pleased to find that most of my antennas were, or all my antennas were, um, they had really um obvious dips you can see right where it dipped down to like one-to-one -one perfect swr and um so i'm really happy how well those came out i'm just gonna and he also lended me his uh nano vna so i'll get to actually because i couldn't tune the cb antenna because you have to cut through the fiberglass and i brought shears with me that i thought would be able to cut through but they were unable to cut through so the fiberglass antenna was not tuned <laughs> so um Wow. Yeah, but but he lent me the analyzer, so over the weekend I can tune those and get them working really nice and everything. But yep, we're just here back in the museum. They're doing construction in the museum now. I'm back in the uh, radio lab. It's still the same radio oh, yeah. lab, but they've taken all the radios out of the main showroom. They've taken everything out of the showroom, and they're like completely remodeling it. All this hallway's got the little construction stuff going on. All the wiring in the ceiling is taken apart. I don't know why they're doing it because it looked really nice before, but I guess they want different stuff. So, um, yeah. But other than that, not going, not much going on tonight. We are just hanging out, chilling on the radio. All right. Well, everything's been good here. We did, uh, as you know, we did the hydrogen thing, and then we just kind of took some. Uh, some different suggestions. Dave had uh, these new connectors he was showing us, which I thought were really cool. Oh boy, I don't like yeah. power poles. Everybody loves power poles. I don't oh, like power poles. These aren't power poles. Watch the video. Watch the the YouTube, and and there's some nice um, uh, reusable wire ties and stuff like that. I, I like them because you can you can put all your wires in it and then if you decided for a different configuration you just flip the things up and switch all your wires around again it makes it really easy yeah and um i'll be honest i've heard nothing but good things about power poles and i mm. i almost i almost have this weird feeling that they seem overrated they're very expensive very they're super expensive. super expensive and yeah everyone just like absolutely just would loves them so much and I looked at the actual design of the power pole and I'm like, there's nothing superior about it, in my opinion. Um, it's just a nice way of being to chat. I've got power poles here. I yeah, but on the stuff that I, you know, move around, it's kind of convenient. It's really easy to connect it up to your power supply or your battery or whatever. You know, I use power poles, but not, they are expensive. But you buy them at the, um, at the, the, uh, ham fest you know you can get them cheaper but uh 
Yeah, I think you might be. What's the What's the YouTube? You might be taken by these. I'll tell you. Okay, I'll look at them. Well, where I that would be great to just have all my plugs set up like that for my go box, you know, and have all standard plugs for my go box. And, yeah. Cause I eventually want a go box. I want to make a, like a U rack, like a U 12 or a U 14. I want to make a nice box with, with my radios and everything in it, <laughs> but I want to have a separate box that'll have a couple of batteries down in it. I don't want the batteries in the, in the go box. And so that would be a good set, you know, a good way to connect all that together. And, um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking for something other than power poles. Only, not because I don't like the design, but because I just think it's overrated and over expensive for what it is. There's so many like those ones you just showed us. They're really cool. So and it really power poles are really convenient, especially if everybody's got them. You know. Uh, yeah, there's, there's something to be said for uniformity. I agree with that. That's the thing. Yeah. That uh, the lady who didn't like my YouTube video is here. At the meeting. Well, can you tell her we don't like her? Oh, what, the ones <laughs> you did of the uh, field day? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she was there. There was a whole big thing. They were like, oh, you broke the law. You committed federal crime. You exposed our secrets. You did all this stuff. They were, uh, wrote me a big long email and I answered them back with all the things that, you know, proved I didn't. Uh, and then they just never answered. So. <laughs> I can I can I can solve her problem in two seconds. Uh, it's a public event on public property, and you took pictures from a public location of a public location, and you published them non monetarily. Well, yep. kiss my nothing ass because that's one hundred percent legal. Yep, nothing they can do. The federal crime they said was me flying the drone, but it was not a federal crime because I was not no. actually in the no fly zone. Nope. So anyway, well, I'm going to go back out there. So I'll be on the side here, but I'll be trying to listen a little bit as I. Uh, All right. Uh, well, we're not going late tonight. I told everybody earlier, we're just I'm going to kind of go to 10 or 1030 and we're going to go. So it's already 10 o'clock now. So I'm going to see what else is going on. And we're going to I was hoping you'd come in uh, and then we're going to we're going to probably fly soon. But uh, the computer is working good tonight, Joseph. It's working great. I've got five screens up in front of me. Um, I'm going to try to get the other two going tomorrow. Um, my, um, uh, display cables did come in display okay. to HDMI and they're giving me the 19 by whatever resolution. So that's awesome. Great. Um, did you figure out how to control the case lights? Uh, yes. They're, yeah. I've got those working. There's a little button on top. I went back and hooked all the case stuff up properly. I found there's a little modular plug builder in there. And you can take all those little plugs and they snap into this one plug that you then plug into the motherboard. Remember how I was trying to, I was trying to stick all those little teeny weeny wires down in that son of a thing. Well, uh, what I had to do was I had to get this little plug and just pop all those wires into the little plug and then it worked perfect. So, wow. um, so uh, my whole case is working All my lights, my hard drive light and everything's all working. And, but, um, I like it. Yeah, I can. You can turn on all kinds of different lights. Um, I I am going to geek out a little bit. It's not uh, the only lights I really have in there are the few that are on the board, and then the the the, the six fans. I mm -hmm. ordered me a light kit for it. Uh, nice. You get like um, you get a. Uh, does it say like RGB fusion or um, or uh? No, this is a couple cheap. different. This is a cheapy. It's just it, it plugs into the power inside the computer and it has a little remote control. I, I'm oh, not okay. I I'm not worried well, about it at all matching and going with music. I'm not really caring about any of that. I I just wanted to light the inside of the box up, you know, so I could impress Rick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, I I got a pair that they were not expensive, but you plug them into the motherboard and then you can control them with software. But um. They just does, does the same exact thing as having a little remote. So yeah, that'd be cool. cool. It'd be neat to see that once it's all uh, extra double lit up. It's already lit up pretty good now, but um, yeah, and you cool. can you can see it in this view. It's right there. I mean, you can yeah, see, it, see, see it the pretty fans good going, and yeah. uh, it's all going good. Um, I'm I'm a little concerned about whether I can get all five of those display ports to work at the same time. But they're not because earlier. I, I would turn the last one on and it would turn one of the other ones off. So oh, I'm thinking it might only do four of the five at one time, which is fine. Cause I got the other one. I got six ports. I probably all I need. 
I, I literally have one, two, three, four, five, six, six screens in front of me. And I've, I've got five of them working right now. So these are infrared transceivers. Anyway, well, that's weird. Yep. All's good. Well, yeah, get, get with me over the weekend when you got some time. Um, I'm busy yeah. tomorrow morning, but tomorrow afternoon or anytime Sunday. And we'll uh, we'll work on some stuff. Okay. Sounds good. All right, well, man. I'll be here on the side. All right. Have a good one. We'll see you in a little while. All right, guys. Does anybody have anything else while we're here? I just realized that these things all click together. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Holy hell. You need so to now I'm going to look and see if the other ones click you together. You can make a weird antenna with that. You yeah. Now they apply. They don't click. I'm there's there's no connectivity laterally, but they hook like that just for to keep things in order, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know you you'll have uh, well, you could have a fourth one. Oh yeah, look, this is what you can do. You could have one come out with four wires that go into yeah. four more, then each of those go into four more. You could yeah. overload everything with that. Yeah, that's right. Well, you can do five, so. Hang on. Well, so, so I've only got one piece of wire, but... You could use it, you well, could use it for a multi-band antenna. It would appear that uh, playing around with them is a lot more fun than they are useful, huh? No, no, I think they're really useful. <laughs> I'm kidding. Do they work with, le do they, do they work with Legos? But, but you could do, you could do this. I got, so you could do that, which is one feeding into all five. There we go. Yeah, yeah. This is electronic Lego. There you go. I didn't realize they did that. You can but, build an interesting multi-band antenna with that. Yeah, I'm not sure any impedance would work out, but I'm sure you could do something. Impedance and schmedance. <laughs> but uh, give or take an ohm. Yeah, of course. In England, we we don't use the H, so. Well, I downloaded the new Manny cams. It looks totally different. I, no, I don't that's know. one thing. Sometimes we need a. Yeah, they they actually change. Yeah, I I would be glad to do that. We could probably do that next week. Um, but uh, yeah, the new Manny. This is what the new Manny cams looks like. If you guys are interested, uh, and uh, it's got a dark screen now. It's got the audio stuff down here in the lower corner, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, it didn't have that before. And it's got uh, a bunch of different controls. I swear to God, I've got to go back and learn this thing now. It's it's different, but yeah, it I still has. The, that looks like mine. I paid the sixty bucks or whatever it is. Yeah, I pay. I think I got an annual on this, but I'm eventually going to upgrade it to the the, the lifetime one. Uh, but anyway, you can set your frame and resolution. Oh, yeah, I've got. Yeah, because that's what I'd like to better do. Because I play all my rigs. And I've got an output from the mixer that I could put into the to the computer, so you can play all your rigs into the computer and then out on YouTube or out on uh, Zoom, which would be kind of good. Not quite sure why, but it would be kind of good. But what I ended up with is that both of them mix together, as you can see. I can't run. Well, I'm not running many cam at the moment, but it'd be kind of cool to go through it one day. Yeah. Well, I, I like Manny Cam because it of all the programs I used, it has about the most options when it comes to adding things to the screen. Yeah. I mean, when you're in Manny Cam, you can literally add any of these things to the screen. Uh, it's it's amazing to me. I mean, I can literally take a YouTube video and I can, this this is amazing, and I actually use this, but I can actually go and and. Uh, Where's my uh, YouTube from earlier? Don't I still have that up somewhere? So where did you find that on on the streaming key? Um, no, uh, when you're in the screen, when you're in the screen here, you right click and it shows you all the different oh, ways you okay. can add things. Uh, and if you uh, if you want to add something, you just click on it and add it. Um, I'm trying to find. I had a uh, I had a YouTube screen up, and I don't know what happened to it. But like when I'm doing, uh, let's say oh, here, I can show you this. Like when I'm doing uh, uh, broadcasting during a hurricane or something, 
one of the things I do is I'll pull up uh, like a hurricane graphic, like a radar or something. Let me, let me find something that's moving here. Yeah, Fox's new radar. I can say copy image address, and then I can go here and I can right click. I'm going to add a web a web page. You could have a UR, YouTube URL there. You could have a web source. Wow. Okay. See, I haven't I haven't used any of this stuff yet on this computer, so. Uh oh, we're down a slippery slope now. You might have to reboot. Nah. It's. Okay, it was successful. Okay, so now I can go back in here and I can go web source URL and I put in my web source and uh, and then it will actually bring that up as my as the source on here. And then of course I can resize this however I want. Why is it not letting me resize? Is it locked somehow? There we go, unlock layer. So now I've got this layer here. Now look, it's not cropped right, okay? So I need to crop it. Oh my God, I don't know how to do anything on this new one. Uh, I thought I saw that just a minute ago. Oh, here it is, it's over here now. Okay, crop, and then you can crop it to just the picture. And then uh, now that I got my picture, uh, I apply crop. And now I can take this and it's part of my screen. I can move it wherever I want. Now I can add the next layer. And uh, what in the hell is it doing? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to have to go find. I, I can tell you right now, I already don't like. Because what I, you've done, you've actually lost one of your video feeds. Because this has replaced it, and that's the problem I've been getting. Well, so, it's it's not supposed to. It it should allow me to add as many of these as I want. Yeah, but I think you added it where you were. Yeah. So you know, there's no way to go back. I couldn't find a way of. And you're only running set seven twenty p. I'm running ten eighty. I haven't even set any of the settings on here yet. Um, up in the top above the picture. I, I know, like I said, I haven't even set any of the settings in here yet. No. Um, this is Maybe amazing. Play. Maybe we'll play uh, next week I, or something. I'm a little pissed right now because th this, if I can't add other things to this, this program is now useless to me. I think and you it, can, but I think you've got to. You see what you've done? You've replaced number two video feed with this, and you've lost your number two camera. Yeah, normally I would just right click, add another camera. Yeah. Oh, this is just shit. No, I think it does it. What? But... Why would these assholes make it worse? I think you've got to add it to your playlist on the left hand side. Go down a little bit more. There, you've got to add a, a, it to the playlist. I think. Oh, for Christ's sake. That <laughs> is ignorant. Why I would think... they make something work? Why would they take something that worked so well and F it up? It's called innovation. It's typical. Christ. So you've got to add a camera. That really sucks. So I normally you would just right click out here. Now I got to go back over here and do it. I, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I don't like this new version already. It's bullshit. I'm going to go back and download an old version and put it in here. But anyway, if I want to add a color, I can add a color. And then I can take that color and I can put it behind everything. And then I can reorder things by... Um, Manage layers, send back, send it back. Now it's in the back. Then I could add another layer by using the dumb button that they just added. Um, and uh, we can do something else here if we want to play a YouTube video. Um, I've got a, uh, 
I got a URL here of some dude talking about some storm. Um, you put that in there, and now it'll literally play that video as Thanks for joining a me source. Thanks Wednesday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. And you can that. mute it. And now you can just let that play while the other things are going on. And then, okay, now let's put my cameras back in here. You can see why this is powerful. It's it's basically a personal broadcast tool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we can add the other camera. Yeah, I need to play around with it. But, uh... And then you can add, let's say we want to do a logo. So we can go in here, images and video. See uh, what? Can you can you do this? So if you go back, say the the guy who's doing the talking, the the weatherman. Mm -hmm. Can you put yourself in say the top left hand corner, or even even the picture from space? You know the weather picture. Can you put yourself up in the corner? Yeah, that's it. And then just move it up into the yeah, and then play that. Just those two images. Because that's what I was having trouble with. Yeah, that's all you would do is just uh, crop it out and then put it where you want it. That's what's great about this. I mean, it's it's amazing how easy it works. Uh, you can literally set up any design that you want. Um, I like to do uh, image and video, and I'll go into, uh, where is it at? Pictures, and then I'll go into my, uh, uh, where is it at? Where the hell is all my stuff? That's crazy. Hmm. Oh, oh, there we go. My logos. So I go into my logos and uh, I go down and I'll find the logo. Pretty oh, cool, huh? Cool. Look at that. That's cool. Yep. And you can also add other things too. Um, you can add time and date. Um, you can add footage from a game. Um, you can add um, a desktop capture. Like I can, I can capture a display. Look at that. That's capturing this screen down here with this guy playing down here. <laughs> And so I actually have a screen capture within a screen there. It's powerful. It's powerful stuff. It really is. I don't like this new layout, but I, I'm going to try to get used to it. You can bring up PDF. You can bring up PowerPoint. You can you can literally save your um, your your uh, Google PowerPoint presentation as a PowerPoint presentation and come in here and actually run it in many cams. And I've just yourself sat up in the corner while you're talking mm -hmm. and then this this here the the um you can uh use other phones uh and do an input with it i don't i don't think i have one set up here but you can I, i've got three of old phones you could take an old phone you download the manicam program into it and you hit play on the phone and then you go back and you go to here and it will show that phone right here. Oh, you got mobile devices below that. Yeah. It'll do it this way too. As a matter of fact, I've got a couple of my phones listed here, but I, I just, I don't know. If, I think they're dead. I don't know. This is an old note. Uh, this is my old galaxy note five from way back. And, uh, I use these, uh, I use my two galaxy notes, uh, my two old phones, as remote cameras and uh, that you can actually stream your remote camera directly to uh, directly to Manny cams. I don't know. I think this is pretty cool. All the different stuff you can do with it. It's, it's actually really amazing. Let's see if I go, Oh, this is fully charged. So let me see if I go here and I go to Manny cams. But you can only use it live. Can you, you can't, can you record? Yes. Yes. You can set your recording and you can record right here. Oh yeah. Okay. So I go to Manny cams.
All right, and then I hit that button. I go to NDI, and then uh, might be the wrong one. But connecting over Wi-Fi. Yep, it connects over Wi-Fi or the internet. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this. Uh, course it's always not going to work when you need to show somebody you know <laughs> never ever it showed it that time there it is there it is yep there it is 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 yes yes and uh, you can, from here, right-click and mute layer so you're not hearing me. And now I've got a completely portable phone that I can use to, you know, go all around the whole studio. And it works good, too. And you can use it in reverse mode. Notice that you're actually looking at what you're looking at in the phone while you're looking at it. So... It works really good. Uh, and a lot of times I'll put this way up in the back of the room, looking down at the system, you know, so you can see everything. I used to do that a lot and I'll be, do I'll be doing that again once I get the, uh, the remodeling done to the shed. But anyway, there's the new computer. I love that day. So fast. So incredibly fast. Anyway, um, yeah, there's all my stuff. Anyway, um, I, I uh, absolutely love the Manny cams. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a great, great program. And I would be glad to work with you guys on uh, on how to do it and all because it's uh, even this one here. I've 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 never used this before in my life, and I managed to. Um, I managed to figure all this out in about five minutes and still use it. So it's not bad at all, really. Um, whatever one, whatever one of these you click on, these controls over here control it. So like you can zoom in, zoom out. If I go over here to this guy, I can zoom in and out of him. Um, you can do any of this stuff. You can crop uh, to different things here. Um, you can even change the opacity like this like let's say i want this logo in the middle i want it there but i don't want it to be quite so prevalent i can actually bring it back into the background a little bit make it a little smaller like that to where it's kind of transparent the image is behind it oh wow yeah that's cool yeah okay you also uh, it'll do corner radius too like if you're trying to make it look fancy you could like bring in the corners see Make it like a little viewer. Um, you can flip things horizontally and vertically. That are really, start looking at globe maps upside down. It really messes you up. Yeah. Uh, and you can rotate things. Um, but it's all it's all right here. And um, you can even set up playlists so that while we're doing the show or whatever, it would play a list of videos for you in the background. Um and down here, this is really cool because now I can click this one <laughs> and pull up a whole new camera here. And look, I've got a new one now. Now I can start making this one. And then when I make this one the way I want it, I can still cut back to that one anytime I want. See, it's like a switcher. Yeah. And you can set the audio for each one differently. Like I could literally, you could have a camera where you are hooked up to my Manny cams and the audio is on and I could literally go to you live using Manicam. I'd say, okay, uh, Dave, we're going to go to you live now. And I'd hit that. And then you, your audio and video would pop up on the screen as if you were live coming from a lo remote location or whatever. So it's really cool. I really think it's neat stuff. 
I keep hitting the wrong button. There we go. That's there. a little better. There we go. All right. So anyway, but that's that's Manny Cam. And uh, we'll do some more with this if you guys want. Let me play with it a little bit more and, and, and get all that figured out. But anyway, you can see it. I do kind of like some things about this new layout. Um, but I don't know where the time went. I got to find the time. It's got to be up here. Uh, here it is. Time. I like the time. If you want to put the time on here, you click that. And look, now I got a clock. And I can make it whatever color I want like that and i can add the seconds i can make it 24 hour i can add a date uh and i can add seconds and it also does stopwatches and timers yeah it does all that kind of stuff like if we wanted to do look we're going to take 20 minutes and we're going to try during 20 minutes to figure this out i could actually put a 20 minute timer on the clock on the on the board no uh, pressure. <laughs> just like uh, just like on Price is Right. And we could even have a little ticking clock sound if you wanted um, and uh, and make it really cool. Um, but, yeah, there's there's so much stuff you can do with this. It's just amazing. Um, I see now that all this up here changes out over there. You've also got. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why the tech. Oh, I guess well, text drawing tool at the top as well. Yeah. In that top left hand corner, at top no middle left, you got is that a drawing tool? No, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. Yes, you you can you can draw right on the screen. You can you can draw right on the screen. Um, I haven't done it with this new program yet. No, it's that one. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. There you go. Oh. God knows what you have to do now. You probably have to say please or something. Give it a stroke. Uh, there's even a stamp. You can put heart stamps. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, look at that. Eee. <laughs> oh, big hearts. Oh, you disappear behind a bunch of hearts. Yeah. That's a mess. And music, too. Ah, music. Um, Yeah. And uh, there should be a clear button. There it is. A fill tool. Oh, yeah, and it works, too. <laughs> it filled the whole thing up. Um, yeah, but this is uh, this is that. And uh, you can do uh, pencil. And then it should just draw. I don't know why it's not drawing. Hey, what's up? How's it going tonight? And let's see here. We got uh, what's that? What I, I don't know. I don't even know how all that stuff works yet. The effects are pretty cool. I don't know if uh, uh, well, let's see what effects we've got in here. There you go. How's that? Um, these are all like different overlays that you can do. Uh, let's see, face accessories. You guys know how these work. You just you basically can set this up, and it will find your face, and it will actually try to put the glasses on your face. I don't know if it's working <laughs> or not because I couldn't see it, but um, but it will actually try to put the things on your face. Um, they also had see they used to have hats and stuff too i don't know where all that stuff they also have lower third you can actually go in here and build a lower third graphic to go up at the bottom down here you know like they have on the news channels and stuff um i had some of that on my other one uh filters filters is fun there's all kinds of great filters filters electricity uh, and you can download, you just click download and look, you can download as many as you want. They got all kinds of different ones in here. Look at that. It's a cartoon and you better believe it. Oh my God. That could be a horrible movie. I've done that before, man. Yeah. I think I did too in a toilet. <laughs> But uh, 
Is that good or what, though? I mean, it, you know, there's it's just fun stuff. If you want to play with this kind of stuff, it's fun. Um, I got to get it to clear somehow. <laughs> Classic guy. Oh, how do you clear it? You find the nuclear garbage. Oh, we've gone down a rabbit hole. Yeah, you know, this what gets me about this. It's like there should be a real easy way to clear this. Back button. Under filters, I think there was a back button, wasn't there? No, you would think that uh, you've got five selected effects down below there. Maybe that's what it is. I guess it's stacking the effects. Maybe that's what it is. I got to literally just get rid of them all. Yeah, that's what it is. There we go. That's what it is. See, I will get all this figured out. Yeah. Shocker. All right. Well, I'm going to love you and leave you. It's time for bed. I'm going to yeah. get up early in the morning, go sailing my little model boat for a while and then i'm going to do pota on sunday morning so if anybody's down lover's key on sunday morning i'll be the one with the erection there you go I beg your pardon <laughs> okay I'm gonna say okay it before. sounds good to me i guess yeah all See right you, dave yeah. I'll catch the rest of it on uh, on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I think we're about done. I'm getting ready to go to bed, too. So uh, uh, Me, too. Good night, yeah, everybody. All right. Well, yep. I'll say good night, all. We'll yep. catch you soon. Sound like the Waltons. I'm going to let it go, guys. I'm going to have uh, I'll have to watch it up all weekend if anybody wants to call me. And uh, I'm going to be sitting here working on stuff all weekend, uh, uh, except for tomorrow morning. I got a few family things to do tomorrow morning. Other than that, uh, I guess I'll catch you guys later. If you guys think of Alrighty. anything, let me know. All right, everybody, have a good night out there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end the uh, YouTube Seven and threes. the Zoom meeting. 7-3, everybody. Have a good night. You do. Hey, this is the Southwest Florida WatchNet, and we are going to go ahead and draw it to a close. KO4 EFS.